And according to this little icon here, it says we're live. So you know what that means? Good evening, everybody. It is Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. And you're here with me in the office. I'm Brian. So this must be Tuesday Night Bry. How's everybody doing? Glad you could all make it. Glad we're all here surviving in quarantine COVID land. And, you know, we're at the tail end of the Mercury retrograde. So we're not even going to give it a second thought today because we're going to power through that till the end of next week. And tonight is going to be something a little different. Uh, as I mentioned, this month, I'm doing themes for every month. So July is Paranormal Caught on Camera or Peacock Month. And for this month, we're going to be focusing on your videos, your photos. And because I do have a little bit of an in at Paranormal Caught on Camera somehow, I do have access to some of the cast and crew. So tonight we are going to have the first of those very special guests with me tonight. Uh, I'm going to bring her out in just a second. You know her, you love her, and you've got your questions for her. We're going to have a conversation with the very talented Sapphire Sandalo. So wherever you are in your living room, in your dens, you give her a round of applause. Yes, yes, she's going to be coming on any second now. So just wanted to remind you guys uh, of what's coming up in the next uh, couple of months, the schedule for the Patreon page. July is Paranormal Caught on Camera Month. It's behind the scenes. August, if all goes well, we're gonna be back on the road. Uh, I've got that Lizzie Borden event. So I've got some other things cooking, getting ready to uh, bring together, but investigations will begin again, even if it has to just be me a location and a camera so I can uh, patch you guys in. This is this is what we've got to get. We've got to get back to some semblance of normalcy. And I know I'm going stir crazy. I can imagine you guys are going stir crazy. And what with the, the repeats of Paranormal Caught on Camera labeled as new? I know, I know it's driving you crazy. It's frustrating. There's a reason for it. But all that means is season three is coming soon. So just hang out. And in September... Uh, we're going to be getting into parapsychology. Parapsychology, yes, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun. And as always, I'm just glad that we can have these informal sessions where usually it's just me rambling. But you guys have had great questions. You've had great commentary. There's been this amazing, beautiful community that you have developed over these past months, and it's always a pleasure when I go on Twitter Sunday night. And we start our live tweet. We have our Sunday ritual that we just, okay, everybody gets, well, some people get their drinks. The rest of us, we gather, and then the gifts come. The gifts come. The cat pictures come. And then sometimes we talk about the videos, too. So that being said, uh, when it comes to Paranormal Caught on Camera, we are at the tail end of season two. So essentially what's been going on is at the beginning of the year, now, you got to remember, we premiered on January 1st. Let that sink in for a second. Think of all the other paranormal shows you guys love to watch. They come, they air, they're gone. And then they come back for a, a repack or a reunion show. But Paranormal Caught on Camera has been running consistently since the beginning of the year. And we're in July. So the fact that you're seeing some repeats now, that's a first world problem. So sorry, not sorry, but I have no control over it. So. All I'm going to do is enjoy watching the repeats with you. But this Sunday, this past Sunday, was episode number 25, which means we have one more repeat to watch, which will be labeled episode 26, and that ends the season. So when one season ends, what comes after two? We've been filming. We have been filming nonstop over these past few months. And in fact, I'm sitting in front of blue screen that we use to film the show. So there's more coming. It's going to look different as, you know, we're going to be talking directly into the camera, much as we do for this. Um, but some people are going to look better on camera than others. And I'm just going to look more tired. Whereas uh, my castmate, Sapphire, she's ready. She's ready. In fact, she's not only is she on the screen right now, she's in the digital green room waiting to come on. So 
you know what? Without any further ado, and no more gilding the lily, I present to you, my patrons, my friends, Miss Sapphire Sandalo. <laughs> Hey, Hello, Sapphire. everybody. Hi. <laughs> I was just like laughing. Oh, the whole time. <laughs> hey, does this does this feel like CNN to you? Like, a little bit, yeah. I feel like you're gonna ask me about my um, political opinions, but please don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep free of all of that. I don't want to mention any of this or any of that. And you know what? <laughs> this group, lots of very different uh, opinions and cultures and different colors of states. But you know what? Everyone here gets along, and I want to continue that. So yeah, usual, <laughs> usual two topics. <laughs> So, Sapphire, I mean, it, it, there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to talk about tonight. And I want to uh, I want to ask you some questions. I know some of the uh, patrons will have questions for you. Um, oh, there's a lot of comments. And being new to StreamYard myself, I'm scrolling through all the hellos and the highs and uh, all the, the, the warm welcome <laughs> for you here. Hello. So. Hi, Sapphire. Everybody. Hi, Tiffany. <laughs> I think I recognize some of these names from the live Twitter, uh, the people that live tweet when uh, the, sh the show goes new. Goes new? Goes up on Sundays. Yeah. <laughs> we have some loyal, dedicated Peacock fans, Paracam fam here uh, tonight with us. So, guys, uh, feel free to post your questions. I'll get them to Sapphire. But since uh, I don't see any right now, I'm going to ask. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sapphire, I mean, I see you in my living room every Sunday uh, when, <laughs> when, when, when our show comes on and the many times it's repeated throughout the week. So sometimes I feel like, hey, you know, Saf Sapphire's here. She's hanging out. But beyond Paranormal Caught on Camera, you have this uh, incredible body of work. Now, I read somewhere, Adult Swim, you had something to do well, with the program on there. Can you tell me a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah. So before I did paranormal content, I was an animator in the animation industry um, for like mm, four or five years. Uh, the very first animated show that I worked on was called Mr. Pickles. <laughs> it was on Adult Swim. Uh, dog, if you right? haven't, what was that? The dog? Yes, the dog, the satanic dog who murders everybody and has sex with dead bodies. And it's a lot, <laughs> but it was so much fun to work on. And everybody in the crew was really cool. And I worked on that for, I believe, three seasons. Okay. Yeah. And then I, and then I left the, that show. What was your, what was your role in, in that crew? Um, for two of the seasons, I was an animator. And then for one of the seasons, I was a production coordinator because I was like, ah, I want to switch it up. I don't think I want to animate anymore. <laughs> and then I ended up hating it. <laughs> I got to tell you, I mean, m me and Adult Swim, uh, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily the target audience, but I've watched so many of their programs. And usually it was like, I would watch Family Guy, I would watch Futurama, mm -hmm. and then I just would be too lazy to change the channel. And whatever weird cartoon would come on, and at first I'm like, oh, I don't want to watch this. But months later, you know, when the theme songs get sucked in my head, I find myself watching them, loving them, and you you, you get sucked in. Yeah, no, there's some weird stuff on Adult Swim. Like, there's a reason why it's on at the time it's on. <laughs> like, it's made for a very specific type of person. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, oh, hey. So you oh, got, yay. You got, yeah. Yeah, for Pickles the Satanic Dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, as far as animation goes, I've seen uh, you've, you've posted and I've seen some of your uh, artwork online. And I see that you've got several projects either running concurrently or that that are out there in the stratosphere and i'm just gonna put something over my head for a second um <laughs> let's see how good okay yeah there you are <laughs> so i've seen your work and you have your podcast stories with sapphire yeah i do see something new that is coming out uh, so you put something called a uh, nabarang 
Can you? Yes. Oh, this is a super exclusive. Um, <laughs> so me and my writing partner, we just finished a animated series pitch for a horror drama series, adult animated horror drama, drama series um, called Nabarang. And that means uh, cursed in Filipino. And so it's about a young Filipino woman who uh, is summoned to the Philippines when she discovers that her estranged grandfather is cursed. So she goes over there and tries to figure out what's wrong. And um, and then through that journey, she also discovers that she herself has these supernatural powers. And so there's a lot of, um, what do you call it? It's a lot of Filipino shamanism and magic uh, thrown to the show. Uh, Cause it's something that I've been delving into for the past year or so. And I'm like, Ooh, this would make such a cool show because it hasn't been done for. So wish us luck. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, I, I love the concept and, and it's funny because anytime we get the video lists for the show and I go through it, anytime we go into Eastern culture or the Philippines, especially I'm like, Ooh, Safra is going to have something good for that. I'll give my bit. I know they're not going to use it because you know we have a better person to draw upon. But we've had some really some of the clips coming out of there lately leave me going, "Wow!" <laughs> and I mean, I know, and and because because this is a private group, we can there's some things we could say. I feel like some of the video. <sighs> <laughs> okay. In all honesty, I feel like that a majority of the time, like there's even been a handful of times where I've straight up just told Kevin, the producer, um, like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, I can't even pretend <laughs> that this like could possibly be real. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sure I'm sure we've both had that moment. I, I remember and it aired again last uh, last week or the week before the Slender Man video. And I said, Guys, we know this isn't real. This was created from online. Please, <laughs> I know. you producers, uh, friends are supposed to protect us, the on-screen talent, from the ire and the, the malice that's going to come on Monday morning on Twitter. Yeah. Do you get a lot of tweets about that? Like, do people attack you on Twitter and be like, how could you even entertain the idea that this could be real? Does that happen to you a lot? I wouldn't say a lot, but typically Monday morning, instead of waking up to some love, I wake up to from some troll that was just like mad about whatever they wanted to talk about. And uh, right. how about you? Um, it happened a lot more in the beginning, I think, and then not so much lately, which is good, <laughs> but it's always really, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, oh, well, well, here's a little more inside information for all of you. Um, so I recently was contacted by the Travel Channel development team um, because they wanted to just, I don't know, they want to do stuff with me. So I was like, okay, cool. And they said something that made me realize, oh, this is why the show is the way it is. Because they were like, the people who watch Travel Channel, they're believers, you know. So all of our shows, we're not even going to, like, talk about the skeptic side of anything you know everything is just pure believer stuff and I was like oh that makes a lot of sense like why paranormal con and camera why we wouldn't even have an opportunity to debunk anything we just treat everything like it's real um but then a part of me is like oh I mean I think people would appreciate if every now and then you know we showed like hey we are actually you know act actually analytical <laughs> about what we watch. You know, we don't just believe everything that we see. So I don't know, that's just me. <laughs> well, this, I mean, I'm sure you agree when, I mean, we are just, so you, the patrons know, we don't get to see the edit before it airs. When it airs, we're as surprised as you are and we're watching like, oh, oh, that was, that was good. Okay, oh, that sounded good. And <laughs> I can, I can say without, I don't know it for a fact, but I know it's true. Each and every one of us, can probably debunk a lot of the videos, probably more than half that come along. But my defense of it has always been, all right, that's not what our show is about. If we debunked everything, it would be a 10 minute show. And right. so I would love to do a spoof with like you and the Marks and get Aaron and just do like a kind of a spoofy episode where we could all go, nope, 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 spring, and just end it in 30 seconds. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, yeah, um, I, I kind of do wish that that there was a little more. I, I wish they would allow us to 
debunk a little more and and I noticed the one of us who would come with some some really good science would be Natasha. Yeah, but and where is she now? Right? She's not on the show anymore. <laughs> SOS, where's Natasha? <laughs> like we need to disappear. <laughs> we need a hashtag, you know, find, hashtag find Natasha. <laughs> I worry about her. <laughs> 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 was the first person I met. And it was the, the first time I filmed was Halloween 2018. That was my first filming for that. And I, I met her in the studio. She was coming out. I was going in. I'm like, oh, you're tall and blonde. And <laughs> she would come on with some some really good insights every now and then. And then. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing that they decided, OK, we don't want that character to be in the show because she re she hasn't shown up in this season. <laughs> yeah, and then apparently so everyone else is wondering where, where she went to. Um, you know, we, we did have some attrition and we got some new people on, so it, it's nice, it keeps it fresh. But um, you, and, you and me, we're OG Peacock members. Yeah, so. I love that you call it Peacock. I've never pronounced it that way. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> when I when it, I, it came out of laziness because in the beginning I didn't want to keep typing out paramal caught on camera and it just came P C O C Oh Peacock. Peacock. So, <laughs> and it's gotten a movie I never thought of that. I'm always just PCOC. <laughs> I like Peacock though. Yeah. Um so all right, I, I like I like what I hear about and then so this is in the your new project, as well as some of the research that uh, that we have to do from time to time, teaches me uh, different cultures and new words and concepts. So I had to actually look up. Uh, how do you pronounce it? Nabarang. 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 Mm -hmm. And I, I wrote down someone experiencing the effects of a curse or hex. Yes. And that's Barang. So Barang. Barang is curse, and then Nabarang is someone who the curse is being done to. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. What do you feel like? All right. Uh, you know, you're doing a, a show about it. What do you feel about curses and hexes? Do you feel they are a real thing or is it in your mind? You know, I go back and forth because I've heard so many stories of people who have either experienced a curse or people who have put one on someone else. So I do think that they're real, but I think that the way that most people think about curses and hexes is a little bit more dramatic than what it actually is. <laughs> like um, there's this one story I, that was in my podcast where this girl, she goes to the island of Sikihor in the Philippines. Have you ever heard of it? Sikihor? It sounds vaguely familiar. So I only recently discovered this like last year. It's an island in the Philippines. Um, it's called the Island of Witches because everybody there is a sorcerer or a witch of some kind. And so now it's become this kind of cheesy touristy thing, but there are a lot of real witches and sorcerers there. And so this girl story that I was telling on my show, she was talking about how she went there and then like within the day, she fell like horribly ill, like just, constant vomit, constant diarrhea to the point where she was completely dehydrated. Oh, and then when she like retraced her steps, you know, because like people have always told her, be careful when you're there because people might put a curse on you or whatever. Um, and then she realized that there was a woman that they met when they first got there. This woman came up to them and said, can you take my picture? And she was like, okay. But then the woman like put her arm around her and then took the picture with her and she thought that was so weird she was like why are you taking a photo of me mm -hmm. um and then later she discovered that that is actually a trick <laughs> that a lot of witches will use so that they can touch you and then when they touch you um that's when the the curse is like initiated and so she her theory is that she was curt well it was other people's theories she didn't think this was it but people think that the reason why that woman targeted her was because she was a mixed Filipino. She was like lighter skin. And they think that she was like jealous of how she looked. Like they thought she was too beautiful or whatever. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. well, that just makes me more paranoid about everything. I I know. I'm content to stay in my house now. Not let people <laughs> talk to me, talk to me, speak to me. No. <laughs> but I... 
mm-hmm. would people and, and I, I live in Staten Island, so this is mm-hmm. all a practical joke. So anyone who's touching me, I assume they're putting a post-it on my back or something. So <laughs> Yeah, just don't let anyone touch you. <laughs> I would rather post it than a than a hex. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But then there is also um people who can send curses without touching you and that's the that's the one that freaks me out the people that can just be in their room do a little thing and then it sends a a thing toward you which is which happens so, like, it's all bad guys <laughs> yeah this is just we we can't win and in 20 just nothing will surprise me anymore like now we could get it in the mail the physical mail you go to your mailbox you open it like oh oh i'm cursed oh, oh no. Hey, that, I mean, that's sort of like what those email chain letters were in the 90s. Right? Remember those? <laughs> yeah. So when we first started getting online, it's like, forward this to 10 friends, otherwise you will have bad luck for 10 years. Yeah. Maybe like 2020 one. is the result of us not forwarding those chain letters. All the people in 2010 who didn't do that, <laughs> thanks. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> we know what you did. So I, everyone uh, in the room gets a kick out of the characters because I, I feel like, and I, I know when I have to answer things or so the producers are asking me questions, um, they'll say something and you know, they, they're they producers, they're trying to get specific things out of you, but we all have our roles. I'm the guy who rolls and says something, Ben says something funny because he hasn't, he hasn't watched the video. Uh, Derek is our crypto guy. Uh, the marks usually say something pretty cool. You, what is your comfort area besides the cultural things? Because I know there, there's that the things come up, and I'm like, "Yep, that's a sapphire bit." You know, I'll I'll pass. What do you yeah. be known for? What's your what's your jam? I'm definitely the token Asian. <laughs> um, I mean, I love the ghost and spirit videos because those are the things that I feel like I can actually speak to. <laughs> every mm-hmm. time, every shoot, uh, and it, we come up to the UFO stuff, I'm always like, Kevin, I have nothing to say. <laughs> it's just because I don't know enough about UFO lore to you know, make up something. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love the ghost and spirit stuff. But I do, <laughs> I've noticed, like since the beginning of the show, I don't know if anyone else has noticed this, but maybe this is just this new season we just shot, but I've noticed myself becoming more of the ghost sympathizer (laughs) where (laughs) I'm always talking about how we should just leave these ghosts alone kind of thing. Like, um, you know, I don't appreciate how this investigator is antagonizing the spirits and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know if they're going to use any of it because, but I hope they do because that's, that's how I feel. I'm like, we should just leave them alone. <laughs> you you've got to do that, like one of those those crying leave Britney alone videos. Like, leave those <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so that's what I am, I guess. <laughs> Jackie from home. Jackie as from my she loves ghosts and spirit stuff too. She's one of our faithful patrons and and adamant tweeters when she can get online on Sunday nights. Uh, here's, here's a question that I get asked a lot. Oh, let's get your take on it. Sapphire, why does everything happen in Russia? <laughs> you know, when the, I feel like this comes up a lot when we shoot. Like, Kevin is always like, wait, is Kevin the one who does the, the what do you call it? Is he the, your producer too, or do you get somebody else? I do. I, I get lots of different producers. My, my common producers are Jill. She's my favorite. Um, and I think Nick, whoever the guy who looks like Jack Ryan is. I think that's Nick. <laughs> yeah, I got him once. He was cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like whenever something from Russia comes up, Kevin's always like, "Yeah, so what? This took place in Russia. Like, what about that?" And I'm just like, I, I don't think things happen more in Russia than anywhere else. I don't know. That's just me. I mean, I, I everywhere kind of has a lot. Do they, do they do this to you? They're like. All right, so Sapphire, you're 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 in your you're in your uh, studio right now. What would cause your studio to be to be haunted? Is it poltergeist activity? Like you hear the same questions over and over and over and over. And the challenge is how to make it different after 26 episodes in season two, 16 and uh, or 18 in season 
on, and we're already halfway through season three, so how to keep it fresh. Oh my God, I struggle a lot. I've, I'm 100% sure I say the same thing. <laughs> like sometimes like when we uh, when we watch the show every Sunday, I have noticed, I'm like, are they reusing my clips or am I literally saying exactly the same thing? Like I have no <laughs> idea. Um, I mean, I try, I try to think of uh, something that I haven't, uh, well, that's the cool thing about doing this show. Um, from when we started it in 2018 to now, I have learned so much. Like it's it's yeah. forcing me to do more research and educate myself about stuff so I actually know what I'm talking about. Um, but so there have been times where they'll ask a question that's very similar to something that we've seen before, but I'll have a new thing to say about it because I'm like, oh, I've like it's like I talk about shamanism shamanism a lot in this season. I bring it up literally every episode, any opportunity I get. Like the tattoo parlor, shamanism. Um, <laughs> like every everything. So I guess that's my new that's my new thing. So it's it's the <laughs> new a it's a demon. It's it's shamanism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Sapphire, we need uh, either to find yours or make up your hashtag, your catchphrase. Because I've got <laughs> hashtag. What was, what, it? Was it? what was it? <laughs> I know I want one. Hmm. I was thinking about that because I remember when I think you were tweeting about your phrase. I remember thinking, what is mine? Um, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> you gotta get yeah. you one. And then we, we, we've been all amongst ourselves just assigning them to people like Ben's facial hair. <laughs> I could say that I, I, I have a theory that Ben is actually three people because uh, he's Either big beard Ben, modest beard Ben, or porn stash Ben. <laughs> yeah. Which one showed up to film that day and which one was passed out on a couch somewhere? <laughs> I love that. And I don't know if anyone notices about me, but my, because I have a short haircut, it's pretty easy to tell when it's different lengths. And like sometimes in one episode, my hair length will just change drastically from clip to clip. Like it's so obvious that they picked it from like different shoot dates. So I, mean, I was there, caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, it cracks me up. <laughs> well, you could tell, like uh, I, I don't know what it was. Well, certain cast members, like um, Susan's hair, boom, she went full blonde this season. Uh, the only thing that changed for me was I changed black shirts, so <laughs> they, they, I'm pretty interchangeable. <laughs> yeah. We gotta go. All right, yeah. Well, Sapphire, Sapphire shamanism. shamanisms. <laughs> I like I that. Exactly, that, that. That comes down to the SS, and we're trying to stay away from all that stuff lately. Oh, sorry, uh, my dog's trying to get out. You want to say hi to my dog? Yeah, every, actually. Hi, everybody. Lola. This Aww. is Lola. She was on my lap the whole time. <laughs> I know she wants out. <laughs> sorry, Aww. my shirt is like going to open. Hang on one second. All right, Lola. Goodbye. All right, we've, oh. got, we've got a serious question here. Yes. On the what was it variety. Brian <gasps> and Sapphire, what, what do you guys you make of the Skinwalker? Take it away, Sapphire. Ooh, okay. So I remember the first time I heard about the Skinwalkers. Uh, it was actually when I was working at Mr. Pickles because <laughs> I had just started my web series where um, I talked about folklore and mythology and stuff. And my friend was like, oh, have you heard about the Skinwalker? And Is he... that something scary? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so my friend was telling me about it and I looked it up and then I read that when you read about the Skinwalker or hear about it or talk about it, it draws their attention to you and makes you their target. Oh, and then I, I immediately just like close, <laughs> close my tab. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so, um, I mean, that's why they say that, or that's why they say we don't know a lot about the skinwalkers because mm -hmm. people don't like, or Native Americans specifically don't like to talk about it because it's a very like, it's considered like a taboo thing. Like you don't want their attention. But um, I mean, I don't know if it is possible for somebody to actually don the skin of an animal and become like truly become the animal. But I do mm -hmm. think that people can probably, 
gain some sort of strength or power in some sort of ritual. Like I think something happens, but I don't think they actually become, right. you know, a coyote or a owl or whatever. <laughs> I mean, it, it overlaps. I mean, even though this is coming from a Native American culture, it seems to overlap with so many other cultures who have stories and mythology about beings that can take on animal form. I mean, we go to the Middle East and there's jinn. Jinn can appear in humanoid mm -hmm. form and snake form and different animals depending on their uh, their, their, their choice. Um, all over the world we have these beings that can assume the shape of something in the animal kingdom. And, you know, as we know, so much of those legends and lore come from an attempt to explain something that wasn't understood back mm -hmm. then. Um, Oh, Rosemary. Rosemary did an amazing lecture on the origins of vampires. Mm. And she went point by point throughout the lore to explain, okay, well, steak through the heart was because of this, and garlic was because of this, and it really shone a light onto the topic, demystifying everything. And it, I, I would listen to these lectures and think, wow, okay, I'm glad there's no vampires, but what about everything else? You know, there's yeah. only a little bit of truth at the center of all of our myths. Oh, that's cool. Um, that actually reminds, I mean, speaking of vampires and origins, um, are you familiar with the Mananangal in the Philippines? The It's like a half woman. She separates her upper body from her legs and flies around at night and looks for fetuses to eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we did. We did an episode. There was there was a clip in a recent episode where I had to research that. Um, yeah, women whose heads pop off and fly around. I try to stay away from. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I I recently found out that in the Philippines there is a bat that is almost human size, and it for the first time I thought, oh, maybe that is what inspired that story because you see something hmm. that kind of looks like half a human you know, with the giant wingspan. And then, you know, maybe that was the origin for it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Very true. I mean, it irks me that there is a, a, a section of our populace that believes once again, that the earth is flat. So the willingness <laughs> to believe on so little evidence these days, when there are explanations, it's, you know, you can't really forgive it. But back then when there was no information and you just had to go on the words of learned people or oral tradition, yes, these things became real. And I've been doing a lot of research into like the origin of the species and uh, mixing with extraterrestrials and ancient aliens and things like that. And recently my mind has been kind of blown out and liquefied out of my ear. So to consider what out there that seems fantastic that really is real. Ugh. I can't, <laughs> can't even. Yeah. It's a lot <laughs> to think it's, about. <laughs> it's too much, which is why which is why I love our show because it's light. We we don't go into demons and you're going to die and uh, everything's dark and scary dude what's that? <laughs> the, the, well, the I mean are the best. Do you remember that email though that we got where they were like, we want everything to sound a little bit scarier? You don't remember that? Oh yeah. I <laughs> and I was like, I don't know how. <laughs> so now at like at the ends of sound bites, I'm always just kind of like, well, maybe they could die or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> we're gonna die. I do remember that email and I, I was like, oh, so you want us to be like every other show on your channel? Yeah. Um, Speaking of, have you heard of Unexplained on camera? Okay, because I've... Wait, you have seen it? I have. It's exactly yeah. the same as that. Yeah, but then... Okay, I haven't watched it, but I've gotten some messages where people are like, hey, have you seen this? Because it's like, what's the difference? And I'm just like, oh, I have no idea. I only saw one episode, and that episode used a lot of the same videos we had in our first episode. Oh had the same witnesses. Their production value was a little better in that they had better cameras doing reenactments, but their okay. their commentators were doing it the way we're doing it now, just speaking directly into the camera. So more budget to reenactments, lower budget to the commentators. Like ours looks better in that documentary style. But I I wrote to travel and I wrote to Michelle and I said, Hey, what's 
why why a why is this here and don't you think that people will confuse this with us and i even saw a comment online the other day they're like oh uh, oh uh, paranormal caught on camera is a repeat last week. I think they're taking videos from unexplained caught on camera. I'm like, no, no, it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, hashtag frustration. Hashtag <laughs> network goals. <laughs> did they ever? Did they ever respond to you? Oh, uh, Michelle gave her her usual. I, I love Michelle. She's been my uh, my my point person since the beginning, and she's always really enthusiastic. Uh, with my enthusiasm, she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna get right on this. I'm gonna find out what happened." Never Nothing. Heard, never Wait, heard anything. Is it the same production company? I don't believe. No, it can't be because uh, they didn't know about it, so it's not Meeting House. Uh, and it originally aired in the UK because it all ha it has all UK talents. And uh, oh. very guy who's also on Help My House Is Haunted with Chris Fleming is on Unexplained Caught on Camera. Huh. Yeah, that's so con that's too confusing. Like, at least d make it like super, super different. <laughs> you would think at least I mean, and there's plenty of videos out there. Use some different videos. We've covered this already. So it's almost like, you know, what? let's let's spin this positive. Let's look at this in a good way. They're a peacock cover band. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> We've done so well that the imitators are beginning to do is sing some of our songs. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, even 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 the patients are down with the uh, yeah, let's look at this uh positive. Although oh no, it's just another look at leave our clips alone. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> speaking of the clips, um do you have a favorite clip that you have seen on our show or done or just something that was so uh, amazing that it just really resonated with you? Um, no, I feel like I do. Um, <laughs> I, this one hasn't aired yet. And you might have probably thought this one was dumb, but like I loved it just because it was so Filipino. <laughs> okay, so this, this, this is super exclusive because this hasn't aired yet. But um, there was a video of a young boy who is taking a selfie video and then you see behind him this like older woman appear and her eyes are completely black and ha she has like no eyeballs. It's just like sunken. Do you remember that one? What, was it was it within the last couple of weeks or was it earlier in the... Uh, um, it was maybe like a month or two ago. It was definitely like the at home shooting stuff. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, it's all beginning to run together. To, to, to <laughs> uh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, that one stood out to me because um, it was taken in the Philippines and they found this video because the oh, mother and, of... And, and he thought it was his grandmother? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so they, they found the video because this woman had posted it on Facebook. And um, <laughs> when you read the caption that this <laughs> that she wrote for it i'm just like she's so Filipino, like because <laughs> like i don't even know how to describe it so um i think it was on mother's day that's why she posted it and she was right. like my son was just messing around with my camera and then he showed me and that this video that he took and it looks like mom's right behind him and oh no no, no, no. that's not what she said she basically was like my mom showed up in the video and i'm so glad that she did i think that she's um you know just wanting to say hi and um like we weren't i think well i'm like all over the place she <laughs> said that like she wasn't um they weren't able to visit her grave for mother's day something like that like they had forgotten about her and so this woman thinks that her mom showed up in this video to sort of be like a reminder like hey you know don't forget me it's mother's day like don't forget about me and then um yeah the rest of the caption was just like oh, i'm i was i'm so happy to like have seen you mom blah 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 and then all the comments are like oh that's so sweet happy mother's day like no one's debunking anything no one's saying she's <laughs> dumb everyone is accepting this as truth and that's why i love it so much I'm like these are my people <laughs> i like i like when people get over themselves and just enjoy the show and enjoy the clips yeah. and you know, you don't necessarily, and that's, this is the thing I love. 
you and I, we're not on the hook on the line for any of these videos. We didn't shoot them. All we're doing is talking about them. So yeah. <laughs> the other shows have to have the uh, responsibility of saying, we caught this. Please believe us. We're just like, mm, yeah. Mm, uh. And one of them that is one of my recent favorites that got a lot of press even before it landed on our show, Dobby. I'm the one who suggested that. <laughs> well, I emailed it to Michelle. <laughs> Actually, it's funny because I, I, I did the same thing, but I oh, saw the video and <laughs> that same day it was going all over the internet. William Shatner commented on it and he gave a very well thought out, non sarcastic explanation for what it was. And I'm like, oh, wow. I said, hey, man, you want to come on our show? So I wrote Michelle and I said, okay. I was originally going to say, let's do this video, but if Shatner says it's not, I'm not going to go against him. And uh, we're probably going to get roasted if we do it. But when it showed up on the list, I'm like, all right. Sorry. No. <laughs> you know why? Victory. I got to say on TV, Toby is free. And <laughs> for the win. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. I can die now. <laughs> I just thought it was like a funny video. I'm like, oh, okay. Like it, it was so popular at that day. So I was just like, I'm going to send this to Michelle. Um, and then later I'm like, okay, maybe I should have sent this. No, no, it's, I'm glad you did. So, I mean, <laughs> have you, have you, have you submitted any videos yourself uh, of anything that you may have, have had in the, in the like stores? Like a personal video? Yeah. Um, no, because I don't have any. <laughs> So actually, here's a good question. I know a couple of people wanted to know, how did you get tapped for Peacock? Like uh, you had, you had the, the, the podcast predating it. So mm -hmm. you have, uh, you know, kind of the, the full core angle, but when they came to you, they're like, Hey, Sapphire, we need you because. Um, it was from my YouTube channel. Um, well, I was working for a YouTube channel called Snarled and I had my web series and podcast called Something Scary. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for maybe a little bit over a year, maybe like a year and a half. Um, and then I, I will never. <sighs> so the, the email <laughs> that the producers emailed me at was an email that my boss never checked and had forgotten the password for. And then one day, um, my like story assistant person decides, hey, I should bug her for that password so we can check this email that probably has a bunch of <laughs> shit there. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse it. Um, and so, okay, um, he's sifting through the emails and goes, oh my God. And so he forwards it to me. And he's like, we, like, you need to respond. And it was, um, yeah, one of the producers of the show who was like, hey, are you interested in this new show that we're uh, gonna make? And it was only a week old. So, you know, it wasn't like a super, super missed that opportunity, but there was also a bunch of other emails from other stuff. I was like, what? Um, but yeah, so I'm so grateful for him to have logged in and found it when he did. So I was able to get in touch with him. And yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. How about um, you? Me? Um, I mean, I've, to date, I've been in the paranormal for 18 years. So uh, I was on Haunted Collector on the Sci-Fi Channel with John Zaffis. And um, I've kind of been that peripheral paranormal guy. So I'm not in any of the, the big cliques or the clubs or I'm not, you know, I, I know all the, all the players, but I'm okay. not in their friend circles. So um, they wrote me. You don't need to be. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'm kind of my own. I'm, I'm the Wolverine of the, the, the group. I kind of go <laughs> off and do that thing. Um, I was, I was worried because when Haunted Collector ended in 2013, uh, all the the pitches that that would come my way were just carbon copies of that with some no nonsense weird people in the lead role, and I'm like, I'm not going to follow them. I don't know them. So mm -hmm. when I got this, and they said, Oh, you're going to be commenting on videos. Immediately, I'm thinking Tosh.0, oh, the soup, and I'm like, Oh, this might be not my bag. But then I saw Rosemary on the on the the call sheet, and I said, All right, if she's doing it, I'll be okay. Awesome. That's cool. <laughs> so in this um, actually go ahead. My my old roommate used to work on Haunted Collector. I don't Ooh. know if you would have known him, Christian Mejia. 
Christian McHale? He, I think he was a camera guy or a producer. I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> the last name doesn't sound familiar, but oh, I remember a Christian. Michiola. Yeah, uh, white guy, spiky hair. I don't know, but he's tall. <laughs> okay, okay. I If it's the person that I'm thinking of, when we went to Puerto Rico or Hawaii, there was lots of hijinks. There was always fun. There was always fun behind the scenes that thankfully never made it past <laughs> those times. Um, cool, cool. I, I I miss those times. I miss seeing those people. Uh, the Honda Collector alum has been spread to the four winds. Uh, one of our old directors now shoots Ghost Hunters over at a &E. Oh, cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're in the middle of season three. Okay. It's uh, uh, we got another twenty six episodes. It's gonna be weird in this format. Um, UFO videos, cryptid videos. I know I'm having a hard time separating them. Like I am the most comfortable doing the ghosts and spirits because there seems like there's a lot more to draw from, but with the onset of, of better technology and higher pixel counts and all these things, what do you think will be the next piece of evidence that really shows something that mm, I, I can't deny this. I can't debunk this. Which category do you think it'll be in? Will it be up? Ooh. I don't know. I mean, I feel like no matter how high tech our cameras or equipment will be, we can, we'll always point to this could possibly be a weird glitch. <laughs> I feel like no matter what, um, right. just because it's, you know, these are man-made and I don't know, like, that's just like how I feel. Cause I feel like no matter I don't know. But then also, see, this is this is another <laughs> thing that I'm sure that they cut out every time I say, because I'm always like, this is this goes against the theory of this entire TV show, but I'll fucking say it anyway. Yeah. Um, most paranormal stuff cannot be caught on camera. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. That's, so that's where I, I struggle sometimes. Because it's like, I do believe that there's a lot of things that can happen, but I don't think mm -hmm. that it can be <laughs> I think the problem too is like you know with a lot of the videos we get are blurry, pixelated. They cut out at the wrong time. But yet, if we had something that was clear and focused, we would instantly disbelieve and go, "Oh, this is fake." Ooh. Right. Right. Yeah. Like, ooh, that's clearly a three D animated figure or whatever. So it's like we'll never, we'll never settle. <laughs> we'll never be okay with whatever comes out. <laughs> that's. That's the motto for 2020. We will never be okay. <laughs> <Yes>. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie from Hawaii Aww. loves your attitude. Actually, she had a question <laughs> earlier. She wanted to know if you ever got out to Hawaii to do any kind of uh, investigating or, or, or legend tripping. I have only been to Hawaii twice and neither time I have gone ghost hunting. <laughs> you know, I regret it. It was like years ago. Um, Wait, what was that question? There was one that popped up. Oh, it was just uh, someone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I do want to go back um, because I recently interviewed this person named Lopaka. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he's pretty well known in like the ghost uh, world of Hawaii. And he's a super knowledgeable ghost tour guide in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. um, interviewed him for my podcast and he... Yeah, he does these like really cool ghost tours around Hawaii and I really want to go. Next time this as soon as I can travel again, I'm heading over there and hanging out with some ghosts. <laughs> we're going to we're going to we're going to put a graphic uh so scoot over for a second. I want you to Oops. tell these fine people about your podcast Stories with Sapphire. Yeah, so this is Stories with Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is my personal exploration of paranormal and supernatural uh, phenomenon um, through stories, interviews, poems, and art. 
Um, Brian is actually going to be on the episode that comes out tomorrow. So make sure you tune in. Uh, uh -huh. There is new. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, new episodes every Wednesday. It goes live uh, Wednesdays, midnight uh, Pacific Standard Time. So, yeah. That's that's cool. I love it. I, I will. I know I had a good time coming on the show. So thank you for coming on mine. It's a little reciprocal nature that had a synchronicity to it because guys, you what you didn't see in our email train when I asked her to come on today, she's like, oh, your episode is premiering the next day. So it was perfect. <laughs> meant to be. Um, OK, that just reminded me of something. OK, there is a phrase something that's used a lot that I rail against and yet have seen, I don't want to say evidence of, but things have happened. I'm like, oh, maybe. Tell me your opinion on the phrase, everything happens for a reason. Uh, um, yes. <laughs> usually when people say that phrase, it's in the context of like, oh, something shitty just happened. So there's a reason that it happened, like trying to make someone feel better. It, it's usually, in my opinion, I feel like usually when people say that, um, I don't, here's the thing, <laughs> because I do, there have been so many moments in my life where something kind of unexplainable happened and then the meaning showed itself later. <laughs> um, but I don't think that is, I don't think that applies to Ev. Everything. Well, okay, wait. Actually, no, I'm going to rephrase that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, anonymous Facebook user. <laughs> um, oh, maybe, maybe that's Ben. <laughs> hi, Ben. <laughs> um, okay. If you think of it in a pure, like, cause and effect thing, yes, everything does happen for a reason. The reason being the thing that happened before it. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, every decision we make, every movement we make s creates a web of activity and things happening. So everything is the result of something else. So in that way, yeah, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> but not in like the lame, like, oh, you're suffering now because it's for a reason. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, I, imagine, I mean, if everything did happen for a reason. Just think, all the bad things that happened to you, you deserve. You did yeah. something in them. What so. an icky way to think. I don't know. <laughs> one, one of the, uh, the comedian I like, Kyle Kinane, he, uh, he does a bit on this. And he goes, you know, everything happens for a reason. And usually that reason is science. So you know, <laughs> this happens because that happens, of course. But then when you catch them in that logic, they double down and they go, well, Lord works in mysterious ways. He's like, no, you can't double down on bullshit. God is I love that. Who can work in mysterious ways and keep his job? <laughs> I love that. So that complete credit to Kyle Kinane. None of that is mine. I just think it's brilliant and applies. And if I could somehow get it onto Paranormal Code on camera, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I believe in you. Oh. I, uh, as you could probably tell, I, I delight in getting pop culture references onto, uh, onto TV. That's my goal. I think that's why I was placed here on this planet to, re you know, regurgitate pop culture references. <laughs> Actually, in the episode, when I was editing your episode, I was like counting all the pop culture references you brought up. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like a little counter at the bottom of the screen and just see how much it goes. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Um, I, I recently completed a, a book, and in that book, uh, it's it's based on my experiences, and of course, it's uh, written in my narrative, so it's in my voice. So the pop culture references are many, so much so that an agent suggested, "Ooh, you might need to clear some some copyrights for this." I'm like, no, I, there's too many. There's there's no way I can. You so. can't even just reference the name of something without that being an issue. Well, it turns out to all be fair use because I don't I don't ever go so deep that it requires it. But just his uh, cursive evaluation of it was like, wow, you speak <laughs> maybe chill a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I was like, hey, if uh, Seth MacFarlane can do it, so can I. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I wrote a book. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm just, I'm enjoying this ride. I'm, I'm digging the things that it allows us to do. I'm digging this uh, community that we've built. Um, you've got a, a, a Patreon too, right, Sapphire? Yes, I do. It is um, slash stories with Sapphire. And um, the highest tier, you get a personal tarot reading from me. Ooh. And yeah. You um, got a, a personal website too, sapphiresundell.com. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so this is the website that has everything. So like all my animation, my illustrations, um, all the random other stuff that I do. It's all just pooped onto there. <laughs> if you feel like checking it out. It's always good to have that that website that almost doesn't have enough room to describe all the projects we do. Um, I tried to redo my website this weekend, and and you know you go you you go into the editor and you try to pick a template that would work as a good start off point, and just none of them describe what we are and what we do. So I just got lazy and I stopped. <laughs> yeah, it took me a while to to figure out how to organize the website because there's like. I, I do so many roles on some things, but then not things. And so it's just like, yeah, but I figured it out. <laughs> so what is next? What's on the, uh, besides seasons four through 10 of Paranormal Caught on Camera? <gasps> we'll be doing this till we die. <laughs> it, it's going to be a treasure. There, there's, there's going to end up being a, a Deadpool of, all right, who's, who's going to drop? Like first it was Natasha. She disappeared mysteriously. And now we don't see a lot of Ben and he's being replaced with, you know, facial hair approximates of himself. And <laughs> Brian keeps saying the same thing. So he must be a, a clone. <laughs> Saffir keeps sympathizing with all of the ghosts. So she's gone. <laughs> she's been replaced by a pod person who's trying to do equal rights and lobby for the ghosts. <laughs> what's next for Sapphire? What, what's besides, um, I'm going to mispronounce it. Nabarang. Nabarang. Yeah. Nabarang. Um, well, hopefully. What's, what's that? What's um, there? So what is out there for me? Um, this fall, I'm actually going to be on another travel channel show called Paranormal Night Shift. Night Shift? Yeah. All um, right, on the night shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they flew me out to Canada for that. So that was really cool. Right. Yeah. I shot it last November. It feels like a very long time ago. Um, but Can it's... Can talk about what it is without... without uh, oh, yeah, I think so. It's it's this part is made public um okay. so real people come on and share a story of something paranormal that happened to them while they were working the night shift at their job um and then they have the experts come on and talk about their story um yeah and actually it's kind of cool because one of the girls who's going to be in the show uh shared a story with me on my web series so it was kind of cool to like get her to like Game on the show too and yeah i don't know <laughs> it's, good networking it's, good overlapping yeah it's it's wild to think how um i don't know like it it's just really cool that this passion for paranormal and supernatural stuff has led me and you in to meet so many cool people and just have really cool opportunities like this isn't something that i ever could have imagined and now i'm like i love it <laughs> it really you know i never could have guessed that this is where i would be at this point in my life because of the paranormal right but it's so cool <laughs> i dig it i dig it uh, and actually everyone everyone here is digging they love hearing that you're gonna be on some more stuff they're gonna you guys are gonna get more sapphire yay <laughs> <laughs> really jealous that they flew you to Canada. All they do is they say, "Yeah, Brian, go film in your living room some more." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what what part of Canada did you go to? Um, oh my God, I am immediately forgetting. I think Toronto. Oh, nice. <laughs> I think. Yeah, it was super super quick. Literally flew in the night before, shot at like six a.m. and then flew out immediately after the shoot. It was. I was like, ooh, this is what it feels like to be like. Not enough time to even <laughs> drop by Kim's convenience store. It's a shame. It's a shame. <laughs> Have you watched I'm, Kim Kim's convenience yet? Um, I think I saw the first episode and I never I didn't I just haven't watched the rest. I liked it, I just haven't watched the rest. 
it was one of those things when I, I was uh, coming back from an Ohio trip, I dipped up into Canada and I said, you know what, I'm going to stop by this. So I, I was a total, I'm a fan of the show. So I did a total geek thing. I'm like, oh, I got to go to Kim's convenience. And uh, the, the border, the border guard just wasn't as enthusiastic as I was. <laughs> so <laughs> I do this. Oh, I didn't know that that was in Canada. It's in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. <laughs> So we are coming on the, uh, the, the top of the hour. I, Safra, I got to thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with me. Like I could do this all night, but you know, we got to leave them wanting more. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much for having me. This was really fun. And guys, uh, where, uh, where can they see or tune into, um, the, 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 the podcast that I'm on tomorrow night, that's stories by Sapphire. Uh, stories with, with Sapphire. With Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow um, night with Sapphire. Yes. Um, and it's available wherever you listen to podcasts. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Anchor, uh, wherever. <laughs> so guys, definitely take note of this. Tune in, listen in, subscribe to this one over here. Uh, get into those stories. Keep watching paranormal caught on camera um and i know you're three hours behind us but i do see that sometimes you do get in on uh the the tweets on sunday nights uh so i know mm -hmm. the crowd will be more than happy uh to see you there with us one night and uh yeah yeah you got any parting words for our fine feathered friends here um everybody stay safe <laughs> <laughs> wear your masks if you go out wash your hands frequently um and yeah just um i don't know i hope everyone's okay <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's sometimes that's all that needs to, to as the sequel to we're not you know 2020 we're not going to be okay that was good that was a good dialogue to bring it back <laughs> we, we we can we accept that Okay, cool. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, yeah, thank you. You're going to have to come back. I would love to. <laughs> you have to come back. We got to do this. We got to make this a thing. So, uh, all the best to you and, and your family. Stay safe. Um, yeah. And what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See you later. Guys, that was Sapphire. Uh, this was Tuesday Night Bry. Um, I'm more than ecstatic about being able to have uh, my friend and co-commentator on with me. I'm glad you guys were here to share this. This is something I did specifically for you guys. Uh, I want you to get as much value for your patronage as possible. And just, uh, yeah, some, there were some questions, but really don't feel like you can't ask a question or, or oh, I don't want to be the one to ask a question. Guys, this is VIP level behind the scenes access. This is for you and I'm glad you guys are here. So and this is it. Tuesday Night Bry, another week, another two weeks have gone by. And in the next episode of Tuesday Night Bry, two weeks from now, I'm gonna have Lynn on, PhD, paranormal caught on camera, folklorist and person on the show that if I ever disappeared suddenly, she could definitely fill my shoes and exceed them. So that being said, that's something to look forward to. Get your questions ready. Get them to me. And as always, guys, thank you for letting me do what I do and being here with me. So with that, you guys have a good night and never stop searching. Have a good one.